The Ferguson flashpoint had a ripple effect in many American communities overnight and throughout today. Coast to coast, uh, thousands of people took to the streets and the sidewalks to march and voice their opinions about that decision. And that also included areas here in Maryland. 11 News reporter Tim Tootin was on the campus of Morgan State University today. He joined us from Northeast Baltimore with more on how people here are reacting to that grand jury decision in Missouri. Tim. A standing lot of reaction. In fact, students at Morgan State began this morning, and even now it's continuing. They're still, we understand, uh, now walking down uh, South uh, Greenmount Avenue down toward 33rd Street. Even now, as this continues, it's already nightfall here. Now, this was all in all a peaceful protest, and if you ask Morgan students, they were trying to bring attention to Ferguson. They would tell you that they but they were successful. It all appears to have been that way. Morgan students block traffic at the intersection of Cold Spring Lane and Lock Raven Boulevard under the watchful eye of police. It was an extension of an earlier protest that began on campus. It may not be the way to go about it, but when you get tired of voicing your opinion that's falling on deaf ears, the only way that you're able to let people know that you're here is to do stuff that may be out of that may not be the norm. Oh, I got a feeling that somebody's trying to hold us back. Morgan students held a morning march, which led them around campus and to the steps of the Northeast Police District. They say the Ferguson ruling only hide the concerns surrounding issues they say they have with police in Baltimore City. Honestly, what's happening in Ferguson and in New York and other places right now is just a catalyst to make um, quicker action. We marched here two years ago for Trayvon Martin. So at that rally, we said that we wouldn't continue to stand for these things. And two years later, stuff like this happens again. So we're just not, we're not, we're not taking no for an answer. Hands up, don't shoot! Hands up, don't shoot! This morning, Morgan's president urged students to demonstrate peacefully and fight for change, but in stages. There are certain things that simply should not be tolerated, but I'm saying to them, take a long-term approach to change and commit yourself to a change agenda. I might add, Morgan State President made those comments this morning at the start of the student protest. Live on the campus of Morgan State University, Tim Tootin, WBAL, TV 11. And take a look at one protest live from Sky Team 11. This is a local group of demonstrators that continue to gather and move down St. Paul Street in East Baltimore. And a small group gathered outside the University of Baltimore today to protest the Ferguson grand jury decision. And there are so many avenues uh, for change, so many ways in which the criminal justice system needs to be improved. We must all up and we must all use our voices for the ones who no longer have a voice. Demonstrators laid on the ground for four and a half minutes, all to symbolize the four and a half hours that Michael Brown's body was on the street after the August 9th shooting. Organizers urged people to use the grand jury decision to bring about change in the legal system and in police practices. Well, all day and into this evening, we've been following local protests to the Ferguson uh, grand jury decision. I send it out to Captain Roy Taylor and Sky Team 11. And Roy, what's it like from your vantage point and where exactly are you right now? Stan, right now, we're southbound St. Paul Street, right by Penn Station. About 100 to 125 individuals here working their way southbound St. Paul. City police has been doing an excellent job trying to defuse any type of confrontation, allowing the protesters to uh, walk the streets. We've actually seen portions where city officers were able to defuse fights that almost broke out between motors that were trying to get through and the protesters, when the protesters would jump in front of the cars, uh, we actually saw one individual get out of his car and ready to get involved in an altercation. But city police were very, very quick to defuse that situation and keep everybody calm. So right now, there is a large group working their way southbound St. Paul. They're just south of Penn Station now, uh, working their way down from what we understand towards McKeldry Square. And we'll have more information on this later on this evening. Reporting live in Sky Team 11, I'm Captain Roy Taylor. They are also protesting all over the country, including right here in Baltimore. Groups are gathering in McKeldin Square and outside City Hall to voice their opinions and their concerns about the Ferguson decision. Catherine Hawley is live tonight. She joins us now with the very latest. Right now we're down here in McKeldin Square and you can see behind me there's a pretty big group of protesters out here. About 150 people are gathered. There are some speakers. They're doing chants. Everyone has some signs. It seems like a lot of people are really passionate about getting the word out there that 
cops. They want the police terror to stop all the way in Ferguson, all the way down here back to Baltimore. Now, this group is planning to march in a few minutes all the way over to the federal building. There's another group that's supposed to be gathering pretty soon over at City Hall. Eventually, we think these two groups are going to march together down the streets. I'm joined right now by Dr. Marvin Cheatham. Marvin, why did you think it was important to be here tonight and be a part of this? Well, I'm heading up a different part of a coalition, a coalition that's looking at four major issues dealing with Baltimore City Police. The first one is a group called COP, Cameras on Police. They're trying to encourage the mayor and the council to stop fighting, to go ahead and put cameras on police. The second group is dealing with the ACLU, heading up a group dealing with the uh, police officers, Bill of Rights. We want to make some changes to that law. The police have far more rights than we do if found to have convicted a crime. The third one is the Civilian Review Board, a group that I'm heading up. We're trying to strengthen the Civilian Review Board of Baltimore City. And the fourth group is a group that's looking at the recruitment and training of Baltimore City Police. So I was asked, because I'm connected with all four groups, to come and speak before this rally to tell folks we're not just here screaming and hollering. There are some very viable things and groups we need them to join, as well as registering to vote and serving on juries. So it sounds like the issue here is bigger than Ferguson. There's a lot of things that people are passionate about. What do you think that people marching tonight down the streets will really get across to our local leaders? Dissatisfaction. Uh, that, you know, there are two cities, uh, one the affluent city and then the non-affluent city, that there's a necessity for us to come together, both communities and police, to deal with the problems that we have. But there's, there's a major disconnect in Baltimore City, and many of the citizens, both black, white, and brown, uh, feel a disconnect and feel that they're being beat on by police, and we need to come together. Thank you very much, Dr. Cheatham. Now, the group down here, like I said, is going to be marching momentarily. They plan to march past the federal building and then I think eventually over to City Hall. And another group is gathering right about this time over at City Hall, and they plan to march around 6 o'clock tonight. We're going to follow these groups and bring you the very latest coming up tonight at 5.30. That's the latest down here live. Catherine Hawley, ABC2 News. A Baltimore City Police Command Center in South Baltimore was vandalized last night. This happened sometime yesterday, right after the Ferguson decision was announced, but police didn't discover the vandalism until 8.30 this morning. It said RIP Mike Brown right on the side of it. You're looking at it right now. It was parked on East Patapsco Avenue. The van has been moved from that location. We're going to take you back downtown to uh, where we're covering the demonstrators protesting in Baltimore. They're on Baltimore Street right now. You see they're stopped because they said they were going to have speakers who were going to protest and talk about the decision in Ferguson not to indict Officer Darren Wilson. They basically have shut down Lombard Street, and Catherine Howley is there covering it. She said more than 100 or so protesters have shown up tonight for the demonstration. Can you tell us they're out in the street? They're right by the... Uh, looks like they're right outside huh? the CVS Pharmacy. Yeah, it doesn't look like they're out on the street blocking traffic. Uh, I don't see any cars going behind no cars. them yet. No. Earlier, earlier reports there. were that they had shut down Lombard Street. Now it appears that they are stopped and listening to uh, Mr. Witherspoon address the crowd. And you saw Doc Cheatham to his right, uh, right over there. All right, we'll, we'll keep an eye on this. Uh, so watch out for traffic downtown tonight. It's going to be a mess. We'll be right back. And you know the case out of Ferguson and the grand jury's decision last night has hit a lot of people hard. That's right. That includes a lot of young people. ABC 2 News' Katrina Bush was at Morgan State today where students had an organized uh, demonstration plan. Katrina? Yeah, that's right. It started this morning with a small group of students and quickly grew to a crowd. They say the response isn't only about Ferguson, but it's about Baltimore, too. They've been looking and waiting for the right time. For students at Morgan State University, there was none better than Tuesday after learning Officer Darren Wilson would not be indicted for killing Michael Brown. It was just, it was heart wrenching. I was upset, but I wasn't surprised. And so instead of like going out and vandalizing things, we understood that a plan needed to be, a strategic plan needed to be brought into action. And that's why we're here today. So, they say, they got organized, they gathered, and no then justice, marched. No justice, no peace! No justice, no peace! No no it was a short walk from campus down to the Baltimore Police Department's Northeast District for a demonstration and to deliver a list of demands to stop and respond to police brutality in the city, including transparency during discipline and finishing reviews and investigations in a more timely manner. One speaker said their passion is not only in response to what happened 
happen in Ferguson, a sentiment shared by so many in the crowd. I'm mourning. Uh, I cried last night, and just like I've cried every other night. Just two years ago, we were out here doing the same thing with Trayvon Martin, and then Jordan Davis, and then Mike Brown and rallies. It's just like, you, we wear black to signify the pain that I feel. This is awareness that we have to bring to the communities and we have to come together as one to stop the vicious cycle of what's going on and peaceful approaches. Peaceful was a main point for organizers to express that anger, that pain and desire for change. They say it's not just about Ferguson and it's not just about one community. Even if you don't identify with being black or being African-American, I know people feel this. You have to. You have to feel it. You have to feel it. And the protest didn't end there. It continued throughout the afternoon. The crowd got bigger and it spread through the streets surrounding the campus. Police actually shut down Cold Spring Lane and Hill and even spreading up to the Alameda as students walked through and continued that demonstration. And students tell me they want their message to spread through the police department and then straight to City Hall. Katrina Bush, ABC2 News. And just as they walk, there's a walk going on right now from McKeldin Square to City Hall, all to show solidarity for the people in Ferguson. Yeah, people across the land were upset by the grand jury decision not to indict Officer Darren Wilson, and that was true right here in Baltimore. Catherine Hawley is out live with the group tonight. At Ferguson, Missouri. We're down here marching right now with the protest. You can see the group behind me. They've actually spread out and gone all the way across the street. We're on Baltimore Street right now. We just crossed Calvert Street. The group has been slowly marching from McKeldin Square up past the federal building. We stopped by the convention center. They've been stopping periodically to just to chant and, and to speak to each other and to just really get riled up about wanting change here in Baltimore. You can see there's a lot of people out here, a lot of signs. They've been chanting the entire time. Now, police are out here as well. Uh, They've been blocking traffic to make sure that everyone is safe tonight. We actually spoke with the police commissioner earlier today, and he said he has extra men out on the streets at at least three different locations waiting for crowds to gather. And he said their whole goal was just to keep anyone who is demonstrating safe. And so far, it looks like they've been very conscious of blocking off traffic, making sure there's no cars in the middle of the crowd. And it seems like it's been a very peaceful, non-violent protest. No one has been getting out of hand. No one has been damaging anything. Just been marching. Uh, it's you know, sounds this like this group's plan the is to go to over to City the Hall and then possibly march over to the police station. And uh, we're going to bring the very latest here on ABC2. Back to you guys. Thanks for joining us tonight on In Focus. We are following the demonstrators marching right now in Baltimore. They're protesting the decision by the grand jury in Missouri yesterday not to indict a police officer. This crowd actually started walking from McKeldin Square less than an hour ago, and now they are standing in front of city police headquarters on West Fayette Street, where that area is closed down. We've seen a number of uh, protests in our area today, but they have all been peaceful. We're standing downtown at Fayette and President Street, where you can see the protest has currently blocked the streets here, and they have 83 blocked in both directions. If you take a look, you can see that traffic is incredibly uh, backed up, trying to get downtown right now. At one point, both of the protests that are going on here right now actually came together and completely blocked 83 in both directions. One of the protests did continue moving down the street back towards City Hall. This group has been standing here probably for about 15 minutes, chanting, protesting, and uh, blocking traffic. We're going to continue to monitor this out here. Here. Stay with us and check in tonight on ABC 2 News at 11. Back to you guys. Here in Baltimore, a number of protests over not only the shooting death of Michael Brown, but the ongoing problem of controversial police shootings. WJZ is live with complete coverage of the protests. Christy Leto speaks to protesters about what they want, but we began with Sky Chopper 13 following protesters from Morgan State, and as he has been for quite a while. Captain Jeff Long joins us now. Jeff? Well, they're still southbound on St. Paul. They just passed under Franklin, so they are right at the um, Mercy Hospital, continuing southbound. The crowd has grown much larger than it was when they left uh, Morgan State, but they are definitely peaceful. They uh, 
whenever they get an opportunity, they try to get in front of an audience, some cars on the street, stop in the middle of the road, stop in the middle of intersections and uh, slow things down a little bit. But then they move along very quickly. Now, the police have been following them the whole time, sort of making a pathway, blocking traffic, make sure that everything is safe. And uh, we haven't seen anybody getting out of control at all. Uh, everybody's kind of holding their hands in the air, waving signs. Um, earlier, they had their arms linked, but now it just seems like a, a large group of people kind of walking closely together southbound, and they're almost downtown. Reporting live from Sky Chopper 13, I'm Captain Jeff Long. Back to you. Jeff, thank you very much. Complete coverage continues now with Rosha Ritchie. She's been live walking with the protesters near City Hall as these groups begin to converge. Rosha. These protesters remain peaceful. They just left from City Hall. They're now here on Baltimore Street. And you can see behind me that they are passionate, yet they are peaceful. Many of them have their hands up, which has become the universal symbol for Mike Brown, who allegedly had his hands up when he was apparently shot by Officer Darren Wilson. I can tell you that this crowd has continued to grow. We understand that students from Morgan State University are also joining in this protest. Protesters, no Passionate protesters have taken to the streets across Baltimore City. Protesters, no peace. From McKeldin Square. Why are they not paying attention? To Morgan State University. This is an epidemic around the nation. All in response to the decision not to indict Officer Darren Wilson for the killing of Mike Brown. Police officers shooting unarmed people. It's probably the, the biggest damper I've seen uh, in justice in, 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 recent, in recent weeks and in months and in the past few years also. Protesters say the decision sends the message that police are not only meant to uphold the law, but are above it. The police in this country have just gone, you know, crazy. They think that they have the authority to kill whoever they want, and they're not really being given uh, any kind of... Uh, they're not being held accountable for what they do. At the University of Baltimore, law students take a silent approach to their demonstration. I started tearing up. Um, it was really heart wrenching because it's like you see that and it's, I don't know, I just felt like that could have been me. Lying on the ground outlined in chalk for four minutes, an indication of the four hours Mike Brown laid in the street. This isn't about one person, although Michael Brown obviously paid a terrible price, but there are broad questions about how the police are deployed and what force they use in particular situations. Baltimore City Police pleased with the peace they have seen across Charm City say they will continue to support those who exercise their First Amendment right respectfully. We have about three different crowds throughout the city as a whole. Everybody's peaceful. They've been peaceful throughout the day. Uh, no major issues. And I think it's an outcry of pain and, and uh, hurt from uh, communities. The protests sparked across the nation now heading to Washington, D.C. as civil the rights organizations the like the Baltimore City chapter of the NAACP take the issue of police using deadly force to the steps of the federal government. And I think people would feel a little uplift if they see someone of law enforcement across the United States when these things happen to go to court. Back out here live at Baltimore Street where the protesters continue to move down the streets of Baltimore City. Right now we're crossing over to Gay Street. Heavy, let's fan around a little bit so you can just see some of the crowd. This has gotten really, really large and we understand that students from Morgan State University again have possibly joined this protest as they march all the way from their campus. But for now, we are live here in Baltimore, WJZ, Adventist News. Rochelle, thank you. And our complete coverage continues now with Christy Aletta with more on what the protesters want. Christy. Well, Vic, this is where the rally for Michael Brown started for students from Morgan State University right here on Cold Spring Lane just outside of their college. We're going to take some live pictures from Chopper because apparently those students who left here around Cold Spring Lane around 4 o'clock are getting closer to it. City it Hall it. as we talk. So they are heading towards City Hall right now to join up with those other people who are protesting the decision that no happened peace. in Ferguson no yesterday. No cry no hands our hands up don't shoot no justice no peace that has been the rally cry for marchers not just across the country but here in Baltimore as well about a hundred students also residents parents children were linking arm and arm protesting the grand jury's decision to clear officer Darren Wilson from that fatal August shooting and marchers say this isn't just a Ferguson issue it's America's issue and it's also very personal
could be me and my this could, this could be me this could yeah. be my brother that could be my uncle or my father like any it's not just African American males as well it's it's females too like I feel like it's fe African American females we should take it as serious now, I did have an opportunity to speak with some of the organizers as they were marching, and they said that, you know, they were just trying to get their message out, that what happened in Ferguson is not sitting well with them, and they want to make sure that that does not happen here in Baltimore. Reporting live, Christy Aletto, WJZ Eyewitness News. Christy, thank you. The Justice Department is also conducting an investigation into Michael Brown's death. Well, we have more breaking news now as we follow the protesters who left Morgan State University headed downtown. They are now causing some major traffic problems, and we're going to check in with Sky Eye Chopper 13 and Captain Jeff Long. What's going on, Jeff? Well, Denise, this is actually a different group than the group that was coming from Morgan State. That group is currently at City Hall. And uh, this group right here, another group that was uh, splintered off from a, from a larger group, has stopped, and they are sitting at Fayette Street and President Street, right at the base of the JFX. So they're stopping traffic. This is going to have a huge impact, specifically on southbound JFX traffic. It's starting to back up. We're looking at at least a almost a half a mile right now back up president street northbound also being affected by this now there's another group directly in front of police headquarters right now and then the third group which is the group that we followed from morgan state they had started to assemble up by city hall only another a block away from here reporting live from sky chopper 13 i'm captain jeff long back to you it's 631, 48 degrees, mostly cloudy. Hello, everyone. Thanks for staying with Outbound News. I'm Vic Carter. And I'm Denise Koch, and here's what people are talking about. We're updating the breaking news. Peaceful protesters in downtown Baltimore, the Ferguson grand jury decision uh, causing some traffic issues downtown right now. Sky Chopper 13 is over the scene. Captain Jeff Long with more. Jeff? Well, definitely peaceful. That's what we've noticed with all of the protesters that we've followed and the ones that we're looking at now. This is at Fayette, right at the base of the JFX, where Tr President Street becomes 83, and they're blocking any traffic from going northbound or southbound. Now, the problem here for people southbound on the JFX is they're pretty much stuck because once they get to this point, there are no bailouts until they get down here to Fayette Street, but nobody's getting by. The police have set up a line right there at Fayette and uh, President Street so to keep people or to keep traffic and people from moving too much in the other direction. Now, I think the reason that they're trying to control that is because there's a much larger group even closer to uh, City Hall. So as we go up Fayette Street to Holiday, you'll see this other large group, which is actually a collection of a couple different groups that came together from different protests, including the group that marched all the way from Morgan state. Now you can see all the signs down there, a lot of people. At this point, everybody's peaceful. We don't know what the plan is, if they're going to move or if they're going to stay here and have the protest at this position. But right now, this is having a major impact on traffic downtown, especially for southbound JFX. Reporting live from Sky Eye Chopper 13, I'm Captain Jeff Long. Back to you. Okay, Jeff, thank you very much. And our complete coverage continues now with investigator Mike Helgren with more on the protests at City Hall. Mike. Vic, who would have ever thought you would see this? We're right here in front of police headquarters. You see the line of police along Fayette Street. That is closed down. No one can get down there. Then you see in the middle of the intersection here at the base of the JFX, just hundreds of protesters who are gathered, and you heard from Sky Chopper 13 that there are more on the way. Then you look up the JFX. Look at that parking lot. Several of the protesters have taken their signs and they are walking along the rows of the cars. Some of these people have been here for some time showing, uh, you know, just basically stuck here as the demonstrators show their solidarity uh, with with those who are, who are upset about what's happening in Ferguson. This has obviously struck quite a chord here in Baltimore. You see uh, several of the demonstrators demonstrators there not moving. They have been here since shortly after 6 o'clock. That is when the base of the JFX closed. There was also a demonstration briefly in front of city police headquarters. All of it has been peaceful. There is the police commissioner. Commissioner, can you say anything about
about these protests? <laughs> yeah, the people are doing their First Amendment right, but could you step over right now so I can open up the Everything's freeway? Everything's been peaceful? Yes, yeah, so far, and it will continue. Okay. We, we want to help them, but we got to open up the freeway. All right. Th th thank you, Commissioner. So we're going to get out of the way as they try to open up the JFX. We're going to continue to watch what is happening here in downtown Baltimore. Reporting live, Mike Halgren, WJZ Eyewitness News. Okay, Mike, thank you very much. And let's check in now with Rochelle Ritchie, who is out there among the protesters, right in the heart of it all. Rochelle. Well, Vic, this is a very, it's an incredible scene out here right now on the streets of Baltimore. We are walking down Guilford Avenue towards Baltimore Street. And the crowd, this is the Morgan State University crowd. And it's also a mixture of students from Johns Hopkins University. Regardless of your background, regardless of your ethnicity, all of them have come together for one purpose, and that is simply justice. So they're shutting down streets all across downtown. We have no idea how long this is going to go on, but they are certainly energized and ready to continue their trek across Baltimore streets in protest of the grand jury's decision in Ferguson not to indict Darren Wilson. I can take a look. Take a look to my right here. You can see traffic is stopped right now at Baltimore Street and Guilford Avenue. And they have been peaceful. And well, I mean, they're shutting down streets, but again, these are peaceful demonstrations. They do not want any sort of violence whatsoever. They say that will not do anything for the justice that they are seeking. Back to you guys. Okay, thank you very much. This is Rochelle Ritchie. Let's go back to Sky Top of 13 as an aerial view of everything that we've been seeing here. The interstate shut down. Uh, uh, let's go to Jeff Long in Sky Chopper 13. Jeff? Well, about a, almost a dozen police officers have moved forward and opened up a lane southbound on the JFX to get that traffic moving, which is a good thing, because like we were saying earlier, people stuck on the JFX southbound at this point have no options because Fayette is blocked at this point. So they're going to try to get southbound onto President Street. The police did not arrest anybody. They did not push anybody out of the way. They just sort of opened up one lane, allowing the protesters to continue to sit in the middle of the intersection here just limiting the amount of impact it has on the traffic. Reporting live from Sky Chopper 13, I'm Captain Jeff Long. Back to you. Thank you very much. As we see, traffic is now moving once again, very slowly, though. That's right. We'll be right back. Well, updating the breaking news, massive, peaceful protests in the heart of the city, shutting down some major intersections. We're going to go back to Sky Eye Chopper 13 and Captain Jeff Long. Jeff? Well, up until just a few minutes ago, the JFX southbound was blocked by these protesters who have set up in the middle of the intersection at Fayette. This is at the uh, north side of President, right at the south side of the JFX. The police moved in, a line of about a dozen officers in regular uniforms, no riot gear, anything like that. They just moved in, met, set up a line, and opened up two lanes to alleviate this traffic because traffic southbound on the JFX, when it gets to this point, there are no bailouts, and these protesters were not letting them through. Now, the police did not not have the protesters move. They just kind of opened up a couple lanes. Now, we looked at another group that was up by City Hall. That group has moved on. We can't see where they are right now, but they were moving southbound, which would put them down near the uh, Inner Harbor, and we will take a look and see where they are and report on that when we do get a chance. Reporting live from Sky Chopper 13, I'm Captain Jeff Long. Back to you. Okay, Jeff, thank you. We have a chance to see where they are right now. Let's go back to Rochelle. again with the protesters from Morgan State University. They have marched all the way from Morgan State University. They were at City Hall where Captain Jeff Long last saw them, and they're now heading towards the Inner Harbor. They are not stopping their efforts, and it has been very, very peaceful as they conduct this protest. All all of this because of the decision by the grand jury in Ferguson not to indict Officer Darren Wilson for the shooting death of 18-year-old Michael Brown. And this group is made up of a number of ethnicities, a number of ages, but mostly young people from the universities across Baltimore. And they say they simply want one thing. They want justice. They don't want to be afraid of the police. They don't want to have a bad relationship with the police. But they simply want justice for all of the police brutality that they feel they have seen, not just in Ferguson, but also here in Baltimore City. So they're taking this all the way towards the harbor. You can see right now we're coming up on Pratt 
And from there, there is no telling exactly where they are going to take this next. Back to you guys. Thank you very much, Rochelle. I appreciate that. And now let's go back to Mike Helgren. He is at City Police Headquarters, where, as we saw a moment ago from the sky, they have now opened two lanes of the JFX. Mike? Denise, slowly but surely, they are trying to reopen the JFX. The police commissioner himself was out here directing traffic, getting the first of the cars moving, but you can see there are still a number of demonstrators in the middle of the road. Also, there's a stalled car. This is no ordinary rush hour, certainly here in Baltimore. And you can see some cars are just starting to get through, but if we look the other way, going uh, north on the JFX, you can see from that northerly viewpoint, all the those cars that are stuck in traffic for miles here. And then if we look uh, at police headquarters, they've got Fayette Street blocked off here. They are using vehicles and also a police line. Uh, this has been like this since around 6 o'clock today. You can see there are some cars that are exiting off the JFX onto Fayette trying to get through as the protest continues. And police are, as you see right now, actively trying to get the lanes reopened here. It's going to take some time, though, to relieve this congestion, and people are continuing to chant here in the middle of the JFX, right at the, at the, at the base of the JFX here in front of police headquarters in a demonstration that has been peaceful so far. Reporting live, Mike Helgren, WJZ Eyewitness News. We have continuing coverage of the protests in downtown Baltimore right now. Some of them have been snarling traffic. Rochelle Ritchie has been uh, amid the group of protesters walking with them, and she is with us now. Rochelle, uh, describe for me the way that the protesters have been interacting with the uh, uh, with the uh, police department. I, I understand we have a problem with her microphone right now. We have her now. Okay. Rochelle, I'm describe, here, Vic. I'm here. Okay. Describe for me, if you will, the relationship between the protesters and the police officers. Clearly, the police department did not want to have another the Ferguson, so it's not been confrontational at all. No. It certainly has not been confrontational. We have not even seen officer, Baltimore City police officers in any sort of riot gear. Matter of fact, they have taken this protest into areas that the police department were not expecting, but they have still allowed them to march and even shut down some of the streets. These protesters have been peaceful. They have all come together. We are right now at Pratt and Light, and we're going to try to move to the center of this. We're going to try to move to the center of this crowd. This is Pratt and Light. This is where this has all ended. And you can see people standing in the middle where they are protesting. This is an incredible scene out here um, tonight. And all of this, again, is because of the, indict the, the decision by the grand jury not, not to indict Officer Darren Wilson. And right now you can see people are lying on the ground. We've seen this at the University of Baltimore earlier where people actually got down on the ground. And that was to symbolize the death of Mike Brown. And you can see the, the guys here in the middle with their hands up. We've seen this time and time again with their hands up. You can see all along here, everyone down on the ground. This is Morgan State University, students from University of Baltimore, Johns Hopkins University. It's a unified effort for justice. They say they are tired of police brutality. They are tired of the injustice of black lives being taken, and this is what they're coming out to do, to say enough is enough. Back to you. All right, thank you very much, Rochelle. It appears they were having that four and a half minutes of silence as they did earlier today in front of the, uh, the University of Maryland Law Building to symbolize the four hours that Michael Brown's body lay on the ground in Ferguson. All right, we're going to go, we're back now with uh, Mike Helgren, who is at the Location City Police Headquarters, where they have been able to open up a couple of lanes of traffic. The protesters have moved to the side, I understand, Mike. Did that happen easily? And have you experienced any animosity from the drivers, from the other citizens? in the area. Well, there was some honking, but that may have also been in support of some of the protests. I'm sure a number of people were also frustrated as well. You can see uh, the demonstrators are here in the center uh, of, of Fayette. Uh, I just talked to the police commissioner again, and he told me that it's a real balancing act for him because he recognizes that there is a pain in the community because of this decision, and people have the right to express their freedom of speech. However, he says he's got to keep
keep the city moving and he's got to keep the JFX open. So he was personally directing traffic here a short time ago and got the first of the cars moving here. They had been stopped for some 15 to 20 minutes. Everything, though, has been peaceful. Uh, you see uh, demonstrators just in the middle here on, on Fayette. Part of Fayette is shut down just in front of city police, police headquarters, but they are allowing people to exit off of the southbound lanes of the JFX onto Fayette Street. And you can see uh, some of them are able to make their way down Fayette and towards City Hall. But we watched police as they were coordinating for this, and we saw a line of officers come in front of city police headquarters in advance of the demonstrators. They have been keeping a close close eye on where they are, and also they were anticipating there could be some sort of shutdown. The chopper for police is in the air, and you can see they've got a lot of manpower out here just trying to keep the lanes moving. Reporting live downtown, Mike Helgren, WJZ Eyewitness News. Thank you very much, Mike, and we'll be right back with more coverage of these ongoing protests. Well, our breaking news coverage continues. We're going to go back to Mike Helgren, who is near city police headquarters, where people have been protesting right at the base there of the JFX. Uh, do you have any signs, Mike, that those protesters are going to join the larger group that's at Pratt and Light Street? I honestly do not. I mean, I think this is very loosely organized. We watched it unfold here since about 6 o'clock. There was a small demonstration in front of city police headquarters, and then people moved over here and blocked the JFX, which, as we've been telling you, reopened some maybe half hour ago uh, with the police commissioner directing traffic out here. But I have no idea whether they're going to join the larger group, and police say their goal is to try to keep the city moving while allowing people to have their freedom of speech rights. We have seen these protesters continue to stay here uh, despite the police presence. Everything has been peaceful, but there are federal and city police officers, and we've seen state troopers here trying to keep uh, things in check, things in order. The JFX is moving again, going into downtown, but going up north to where you are on TV Hill, it looks like those lanes right now are still blocked. We'll continue to keep an eye on it here in front of city police headquarters at the base of the JFX. Mike Helgren. WJZ Eyewitness News. Now to the reaction not to indict Officer Darren Wilson in the shooting death of Michael Brown. Protests, as we said, have been happening all day in the city of Baltimore. Keith Daniels has been following the demonstrations all evening and he's streaming live downtown right now. Keith, has it been peaceful relatively tonight? Absolutely, Jeff. Now, for the most part, it seems that things are pretty quiet at this hour. Traffic is moving smoothly through downtown, and there's no sign of any demonstrators at this hour. But earlier tonight, there were hundreds of people marching through downtown with one group stopping here, right outside police headquarters. Black lives matter! Black lives matter! Black lives matter! Protesters continue to chant Black Lives Matter. At least 100 demonstrators converged outside police headquarters where they shut down traffic for at least an hour. A line of police officers stood with restraint and patience while controlling the crowd and directing traffic. But at one point when it appeared some protesters were getting too close to the faces of some officers, state troopers moved in, stood with officers. Protesters continued to stand too while drivers waited. The reason why folks are out here, folks are angry. It's the only way we can express that frustration and that anger. You don't get it through the electoral system. You don't get it through voting every few years. We haven't gotten it. You know what? I'm glad that they're here in freedom of speech. It, they're rooting for the right thing. I mean, it's our civil duty, you know. It, it sucks for me, but it should be what's going on. Well, before the event outside police headquarters, more chants and another group of demonstrations are demonstrators who marched from McKeldin Square with a stop at City Hall and later police headquarters, where we are back here live now outside police headquarters. Now, fortunately, tonight I have no reports of any major incidents from these demonstrations, but police say a car did strike a protester here who was standing out in traffic despite a warning from police. No word. 
on that man's condition. We're live now at City Police Headquarters, Keith Daniels, Fox 45 News. Thank you, Keith. Many times tonight, the demonstrators seem to be testing police by daring officers to arrest them. No justice! No peace! No justice! No peace! No justice! No peace! No justice! No peace! No justice! This was the scene at Pratt and Light Streets about two hours ago as protesters occupied the intersection. They sometimes confronted police and then walked west on Pratt through traffic, shouting at motorists, but no violence was reported there. Hands up! Don't shoot! Hands up! Don't shoot! Earlier in the day, about 200 current and former Morgan State students gathered on the university's campus in northeast Baltimore. They also marched down Cold Spring Lane near the Alameda, shutting down traffic at intersections. And later, the students' march toward downtown was posted on social media, and we're taking a look at some of that right now. You can see this video, which shows protesters in the streets chanting and, and raising signs. And then you see this protest uh, as they walk through the streets. This was uh, near Morgan State University, kind of the chaos there. This is a view from above St. Paul Street. You can see people walking towards downtown there. And in this spot, they're actually kneeling, hands up, saying, hands up, don't shoot. And you can see they're actually kneeling in the middle of the street there. And then this walk, when they're actually walking into oncoming traffic, making their way downtown. And another picture as protesters made their way towards downtown today. Also, the decision in Ferguson sparked a protest at the University of Baltimore Law School. Students gathered at 11.15 a.m., the same time Michael Brown was shot by Officer Darren Wilson. They held a peaceful protest lying on the ground in those chalk outlines. It has been 24 hours since the grand jury's decision in Ferguson, but the protests here in Baltimore and across the nation are not slowing down. Dozens are still marching at this hour. WJZ is live with complete coverage. Mike Helgren on the scene as major intersections downtown are shut down. And Christy Aletto has been following these protests all afternoon. First, here's Mike. Mike? Vic, what a night it has been. The JFX has been shut down two times, but if we look out at the intersection here with Fayette right now, you can see traffic is running smoothly again. However, not very far from where I'm standing right now at North Avenue by City School Headquarters, the protesters continue to march, and there is a very heavy police presence with them, including a busload of state troopers. They are not letting them stop, go down any of the side streets right now, and we're continuing to monitor their march march through Baltimore. As anger over the Ferguson decision spread to Baltimore, protesters shut down I-83 several times, some sitting in the street, creating gridlock downtown for hours. But slow! But slow! Keep it moving! Even the police commissioner directed traffic and large numbers of city and federal officers and state troopers let demonstrators have their say. 83 is open and we're going to facilitate people having their First Amendment rights, but we're not going to shut down traffic. While protests were largely peaceful, there were moments of chaos, including this video showing someone jumping on an SUV and tension as a U.S. mail truck tried to turn on Fayette Street. We want to make sure that everybody understands that everybody is against against this uh, overreach of policing. It's not a matter between black or white. It's a matter of what's right and what's wrong. Police carefully cordoned off blocks, forming barriers near Baltimore City Hall, and kept close tabs on the crowd. Balancing freedom of speech while keeping the city moving. Now, we do know of one injury, a demonstrator who was hit by a truck, but we're told that the injuries are not life-threatening. And again, this is not over. The protesters continue marching down North Avenue at this hour. We're going to continue to monitor that for you, but I can tell you right now, downtown seems pretty quiet. We can say that what happened in Ferguson has certainly struck a chord here in Baltimore. Denise. Clearly. Thank you, Mike. And Christy Aletto walked with hundreds of demonstrators in the street tonight. Christy, what was their message? Well, Denise, they're saying that status quo has never been working and that what happened in Ferguson can't happen here on the streets of Baltimore. Streets, streets, it's the anthem for their movement. 
message. We want people to not be afraid. We want people to see how many people are tired of the of the same old, same old, and the same laws, and people not being held accountable. A grand jury's decision this week declared Darren Wilson, the cop who killed unarmed teen Michael Brown in Missouri, is at the center of Tuesday's protest. A black child was killed. Right. Race is real. Students, parents, residents are flooding the streets. The protest is peaceful, but their message is stern. These are human beings, and it's not right that we can just pick and choose who gets to live. Why is this not just Ferguson's issue, but it's Baltimore, it's America's issue? Because there's just cops all over America who are just killing all these innocent young people. I have a little brother who's about the same age as these kids. For Tanisha Foreman, it's personal. I want to feel that somebody won't see him and be like, that's somebody that we have license to kill. This is the first time I've ever cried because I'm alive to see two black young men get shot down and nothing happened to the killer. So it could happen to me any day. It's that reality marchers are hoping to change. A change they say starts now Justice! on the streets of Baltimore. Now! Now we're standing in McKeldin Square downtown. It was one of the places that marchers actually stopped, took a moment, and had a rally before moving on to their next location in the city. And I think it also should be noted that for the most part, this was a lot more peaceful protest than what we saw coming out of Ferguson. Reporting live, Christy Aletto, WJZ Eyewitness News. Denise. All right. Thank you very much, Christy. And now back to the story that we've been watching all night. The fallout from Ferguson felt on our streets tonight, from the Inner Harbor to City Hall to 83, over to President Street in MLK. Yeah, hundreds of the, on the streets are telling us exactly what they thought of last night's grand jury decision not to indict a white policeman for killing a black teenager. ABC 2 News' Catherine Hawley live in the middle of it all tonight. It's very calm out here right now. The first protest kicked off tonight right around 4 p.m., with the last ones wrapping up about an hour and a half ago. People flooded downtown tonight, passionate about change and hoping that it happens here in Baltimore. Barricades up and officers in place. Baltimore police had extra bodies across the city ready for the protests. And it's, a, it's an outpouring of pain that, that's going on, and so it behooves us to, to pay attention and, and make sure that it goes peacefully. Uh, please stay fired up, ready to go. Hundreds of people turned out to hit the streets. The resistance is justified. Marching in a mass, stopping traffic, and sharing their message. When do we want it? Now? They held signs and moved in peaceful protest, showing solidarity with the people in Ferguson. I came out because I'm sick of the injustice. We have black men, women, and children unarmed being shot down all the time. And I think it's just really encouraging to see people, black and white, across the aisle holding hands and saying that we have a problem here and something has to change. This is a really important issue to me. It's an important issue to Baltimore as a city. City police kept a close eye on the action, but everything remained fairly tame. No Other groups gathered around the city, this one demonstrating at City Hall before marching, some sitting on the street outside police headquarters. Multiple times, the protesters spread out and blocked traffic on the JFX, forcing drivers to sit and wait. I think it's appropriate. I think, uh, although I'm inconvenienced, um, is a worthy uh, issue. All, all, I, all, all I want is going home. I'm tired. <laughs> the protest continued across downtown for hours. Folks say they think the movement was successful. I think we got the attention. We not finished. We definitely not finished. But we got the attention. Like we have to keep going. We have to keep moving forward. We have to keep making our voices heard. City police tell us that no one was arrested tonight, but one protester was hurt after they were hit by a truck near Pratt and President Streets. We are told that that person was not seriously injured. I-83 has been open and running smoothly since about 945. That's the latest out here live at police headquarters. Catherine Hawley, ABC2 News.